Hello and welcome to the strategic analysis for the February 2019 MCS sitting on Crown Care. So I am Joseph Bowen with Australian Tier. We're going to be walking through all the strategic models that you'll need to know and think about in terms of applying them to the exam because the exam is very theory focused. So we really need to be aware of these. So with that said, let's have a quick introduction to the case in case you haven't you know been through the pre-scene yet yourself the first thing is that it's a complex industry because we're a healthcare for-profit business and typically healthcare is often partially you know undertaken by a government or government linked bodies such as the national health service in the uk and other features across you know western europe and the states so we're a private for-profit dental practice company and we're a leading dentistry provider in Varentia's main city capital city however it's just one city so again we've got you know some things to think about such as you know being very limited to just one economy to one area etc we'll get into that later on but also the domestic health service is not suitable for funding dentistry to the patients that want to access free dentistry. They're just simply not putting up the same rates that the open market does. So we don't take any VHS, the Varenta Health Service customers, which is a little bit of a limit on our overall customer base. But again, we'll get onto that. So the whole idea of strategic analysis follows the rational model and each theory feeds into a different aspect of the business ranging from where the business is now which is pestle five forces the business environment our value chain and all the internal analysis we can generate and this also you know feeds into our business strategy and we have ansoft's matrix the method of growth but importantly the fundamental to business is always what's our mission where are we going where's the future what do we want to do and involved in this is stakeholder mapping and governance so that's what we're starting on right now the first stage of this analysis is to ensure that we fully understand where we're going and the approach that stakeholders need or the ones that fit the stakeholders needs so to recap the mission as part of a company is what is the organization all about and essentially it's our common purpose we're focusing the strategy and providing direction to our overall course so typically we're going to think of questions that Campbell sets out because that is the prevailing theory on our mission statement and that is our purpose why do we exist and for whom our strategy how do we compete and who are we competing with the values, which essentially comes down to what kind of leadership strategy are we focusing on? Are we looking for value for money, so cost leadership? Are we looking for a middle of the park kind of strategy, which would be product differentiation? Or are we trying to be completely different in the sense that we are quality leaders? And that's essentially where we are situated, but we'll get onto that in just a second. And ultimately, the policies as well. What are the policies that we're expected to follow to give our business our mission all these values and strategics and purpose how do we give them life via our policies so with that spiel the first thing we need to think about is how do we measure our mission so we've got this idea that we want to be quality leaders but where do we get that from how do we measure the performance of that mission what is our key metrics to decide that we're actually undertaking it? And financially, on the balance scorecard, we're thinking mostly about profit and we can utilize these other metrics such as return on investment and gearing to help us further understand how the financials are going. But that is a completely different topic, really, in terms of, you know, it's quite numerical and straightforward. However, the less clear is things like the internal learning and customer perspectives so we obviously want in terms of the customers to have the most customers so in terms of customers 
We want to have the most, essentially, but also we need to track complaints, the number of services that they render per individual, and satisfaction from survey and re retained loyalty of the customer. Unfortunately, customer retention is not a great metric for this particular industry because of how the catchment areas work. Your local dentist often is your dentist and the differences between dentists have to be very, very great before somebody often decides to go further out of their way to go to the dentist. But with that said, let's have a look at the learning perspective and essentially we're looking for high quality recruits and we know that all of our staff are extremely skilled and it's one of those weaknesses that we have in the set or at least the risks we have, I should say that staff would be unhappy because they're not easy to replace. And it enhances the idea that we do need to have high quality recruits because the, uh, the whole quality leadership in such a highly skilled profession demands it. But also training on the job is especially important. We know from the pre-scene that we do undertake this and we should track the hours spent on training so that we can you know, have a better idea of how we are performing our quality leadership goals in the sense of keeping our staff as trained and well-educated as possible. And finally, the internal perspective, employee utilization rates. Again, so that's about how much are we using each of our staff. If, say, for example, the cosmetic trend in the dental industry goes further and further and less people need you know, just normal checkups, they just have their six monthly, there's less work being done on preventive care or restoration care, then suddenly something like a hygienist, we're going to need less of them. So at some point, we will spot that our utilization in that in that scenario where hygienists are less important, we would spot on our internal perspective that the utilization of the hygienist is going down because there's less appointments for them to do. And then we can reevaluate our strategy based on that. There's no point having employees that don't have anything to do, really. And moving on from that, we have you know success rates of jobs. Moving on from that, we have success rates of jobs. And of course, coming under budget is quite important. If you haven't seen the pre-scene yet, the budgeting section and costing section is quite interesting because in the prior page, there is a hint that perhaps our budgeting looks really good because our system, our IT software that compiles the data doesn't actually look at some key metrics in terms of timings in part of the costs. So our budget could be a little bit ill-fitting and, and give us a warped idea of how we're doing on that regard. But that's for you know the pre scene analysis. Essentially, we want to come under budget. Employee satisfaction is especially relevant with our skilled staff. Investment in IT, again, especially important because we're looking to be quality leaders. So any innovation, we need to be on top of it. And of course, how well our projects are being managed. So any new acquisitions, how successfully they integrate and how quickly they come up to standard will be a measured perspective. So governance is completely different, of course. But unfortunately, it's also something that we haven't really been told about in this particular pre-scene. We know they're unquoted, so they're not bound by the same kinds of legislation that stock, mar stock market listed companies are, I should say. And with that in mind, so it's not really a big deal at this point and only becomes important if we were to give the context in the exam that perhaps we were looking to float on the stock exchange again and have our shares on the open market. So with that said, whilst we can have a look at governance here with the separate chairman and CEO, the independent NEDs, stuff like that, it's not especially important. One of the key things though to point out is that there's no audit nomination and remuneration committees, of course, because they are not on the stock exchange currently. And this essentially means that if we were to be given the question on a stock market listing, we should definitely mention the need for an audit nomination and remuneration committee. That's just one of those fundamental things that we always have to mention. So to compile governance as part of, you know, just some bullet points, we have that they're unquoted, so they're not duty bound to governance regulations at present. 
They do have a functional structure, which we went through in the preceding analysis, but in case you haven't checked that out, essentially the main pro is going to be that they have a good control of each function and the expertise will match for each function. On the flip side, negatively, communication between the functions can be a little bit awry. It can go a bit wrong because they're not necessarily you know, functioning on a communication basis because there's no real need based on the functions. So ultimately, we will have potentially a lack of goal congruence, but a skilled CEO can bring that together without too much of a problem. It is quite a common structure to be utilized, especially in this industry. With that said, again, no, no, no mention of remuneration nomination of audit committees, but they aren't listed, so don't need to. Key staff occupy the board seats and own equity. So this is quite relevant in the sense that because we are a former partnership and we've sort of developed that way, we have succession planning in terms of the dentists retiring, selling their shares to current dentists, and they'll make a profit based on how well the the practice is done or the group rather has done over the time they've been a dentist there however it's going to be important for ter in terms of you know the management and vision of the company that they do their due diligence in succession pan planning rather with that interview that was mentioned in the pre-scene